Welcome to a tutorial about Entwine. In this video, I'm going to look at the four macro, in particular, working with the data structure of arrays within JavaScript and, of course, within SugarCube 2.36. So let's work through these four different example passages and look at how we can access arrays in different ways. So the four macro allows us to loop code based on some condition. Generally, we set it up in kind of three different parts, sometimes thought of as the header and then the body of working with the for structure. Now, the kind of idea of a for loop dates back many, many decades until kind of the early 1950s. And often, and you will find this within the SugarCube documentation and documentation of many other programming languages, letters I, J, and K are generally used. You can use other variables, but they often appear within documentation. So don't be terribly surprised if you see within my own examples, and of course examples within SugarCube documentation uh, dates back quite a long time. So when we set up the kind of header or body, we generally have three things within the header, if you want to think of it that way which is generally the initial condition or the initial setup of a variable, the condition itself, what is causing this loop to happen, and then how we increase or decrease or otherwise affect some type of variable. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Down here, right here, we have these three parts. We're initially setting up a temporary variable i to the value zero. Then this is the condition. It will keep looping until this is no longer true that the temporary variable i is less than color's length. It's a quick review here. Arrays have a property called length, which is the number of things within them. And then the third part of the header here is we are increasing temporary variable i by one, so starting at zero and running up to the length. And once i is greater than the length, then break this loop. So it's going to keep looping until this happens. So generally, when we work with arrays, because we access them based on their position or based on their index, this becomes incredibly useful because we can loop until we get to the number of them, the length of it, and then stop. So in this case, the temporary variable i is used as an index to access the individual colors within the array. So we will move through the array one entry at a time, one position at a time, one index at a time, and then use that temporary variable that we're now tracking to then show the corresponding value at that location within the structure. Let me kind of run this to show you what I'm talking about. So there it goes, green, red, and yellow. And of course, if we come back and reopen example one, green, red, and yellow. So one of the most useful ways to combine the four macro and arrays is simply to move through the array one entry at a time. So while we're doing this, we often call this iterating. So in programming terminology, we often describe the use of iterating over some structure. And this will make a little more sense when we talk about other data structures within JavaScript. But at least for right now, for arrays, we will often use the phrase iterating over. This simply means we are moving through each entry, each position, each whatever within some structure, one thing at a time. Now, when we discuss arrays and other data structures that are larger collections of data, we often describe them in terms of a range of data. So sometimes we know how big the structures are, sometimes we don't. But the word range, borrowed from mathematics, simply means across the entire collection of them, the range of them. So we might sometimes combine these phrases, and you sometimes hear this in a little more technical use within programming, of iterating over a range, which simply means that we're moving through each thing at a time, generally from the beginning to the end, but we'll talk about it a little bit. Sometimes we want to, might want to break that up. So we're moving, iterating over some range. In fact, so common is this kind of use of the technical term range to describe the kind of whole collection of things that SugarCube has a special keyword for it called range. So instead of doing the thing I just showed you in the previous example where we're moving through the entire length, we can kind of shortcut this or condense it into an even smaller form. So if we were interested in doing the same thing I just showed you where we are moving from zero to the end of some array, moving one thing at a time, iterating over, we can condense that into this form right here that says for temporary variable i comma temporary variable entry range is a special keyword and then some array. So in this case, i will give us the constant index from zero to whatever it is. 
an entry will give us the corresponding value matching that index within the general structure. So instead of writing three things, we can kind of simply write one thing. And SugarCube's going to understand and translate that for us as, again, iterating over the entire range. So if we run this code, we would simply get the index and the entry. Now, if we don't really care about the index and we just want the entry, we can actually condense this even more into just really short things and say for entry range array. So if we're only interested in moving through, iterating over the range of values, we can condense this even more. So for entry range colors. So again, if you're interested in the position, your I comma entry, if you're interested in simply the entries, you can just use that. Now keep in mind, as with the I used in example one, these are just temporary variable names. You don't have to use I, you don't have to use entry. In fact, you will see in a later example, I use a different name. So whatever is most appropriate or makes logical sense as we're going through things. So I'm gonna go ahead and run example two. And we see right here, right? The index is zero, the value is green, the index is one, the value is red, index is two, value is yellow. And of course, the value is green, the value is red, the value is yellow. So we can condense that form and we're iterating over a range or simply using the range special keyword within SugarCube. So for those situations, that's kind of an easier way to write the same thing I showed you in example one. Moving over to example three, we often find ourselves in situations where we want to add to an array. We call this pushing to an array. And what we mean is we're pushing things to the end of an array. So imagine a kind of spread out array, maybe it's kind of film cells or kind of structured on a table and you're looking at things from left to right. If you were adding something to the end, you'd be adding it to the right or pushing it to the end. So to do that, we use the method push. And this is of course a JavaScript method to do this. So whatever we add just becomes part of the end. So one of another ways to address the for loop and arrays is to loop a certain number of times and then push things to the end of the array. So we can create an array dynamically based on some condition. Keep going until this happens. So pretty commonly, if we want an array to have a certain number of things, we loop a certain number of times and then push to the end each time. So in this example down here, Notice I'm returning to the form we saw in example one because I want to run a certain number of times. So temporary variable i set to zero. Here's that use again of i. i is less than 10, so I only want to run 10 times from zero to 10. So zero to nine is a total of 10. And then of course, of course increase, increase i by one each time. And I'm reusing the run macro. So as mentioned in a previous video, the run macro allows us to run a single line of JavaScript code or we can mix it in with some SugarCube stuff, and we just want to run it, we don't necessarily want to save what happens as a result. So right here, I am pushing, right here, random one to 20. So as a quick review, the random function or random method added by SugarCube allows us to generate random numbers between some minimum and some maximum. So I'm between a minimum one, maximum of 20, push to this array, so at the end, I'm going to have 10 numbers as if it was 10 20 sided dice rolls. And then right here, we are reusing the kind of condensed format that we saw in example two for entry range example. And then of course, show us the roll each time. So if I go ahead and start the story from here, we would see generate 10 rolls. And of course it didn't generate any output, which just ran 10 times. And then we see the corresponding rolls right here, 8, 17, 3, 13, and through 16. So if we want to just run things a certain number of times, we can set that up as well. And if we then want to access what happened, we can use the kind of condensed form. So the condensed form, as example three shows, is best at kind of showing us what happened within an array, what exists within an array. And if we're interested again in the index, we would go underscore i, temporary variable i, comma entry, or whatever else we want to call it. So let's kind of end this video on another example. So there might be some cases when we're working with the for macro and we're working with other data structures, and of course we're focusing on arrays as part of this video, where we don't want a loop to run through the whole thing. We want to set up some kind of internal condition while it's looping, check something. If this condition happens to be true, break what you're doing. 
This is pretty common if, for example, we're searching through an array or we're moving through an array a certain number of times, and we want to prevent the total number of times. And so, for example, if an array contains 100 things, we don't generally want to run 100 times. And sometimes we do, but sometimes we don't. Or if it has 10,000 or a million different entries, once we found what we're looking for, we want to what's called break the loop. So there's a special macro for this within SugarCube called break. So I've set up something right here where without this, it would run a hundred times, which might be fairly time consuming. Not right here, but it might be in some other example. But I've set a kind of internal condition using an if macro that says if i is greater than 20, so once we hit that thing, right here I have the break macro that's going to break us out of the loop. And again, this can be very useful if you're doing things like searching an array or producing some other thing. Once certain conditions happen, you can then break out of that loop. And then right here, I am using a story-wide variable i instead of the temporary variable i, because I want to save the number of times we ran that. So keep in mind, we don't necessarily have to use temporary. We can use story-wide variables in the same structure. So if I go ahead and run example four, as to start from here and build and play, notice this is all the loops we ran right here, and then we ran for 21 times. 21 is greater than 20, so as soon as we hit that condition, we broke out of that loop. So in all of these cases, the four macro is incredibly powerful within SugarCube. We can loop a certain number of times, as we saw in example one and example four, or if we're interested in the contents of some data structure, particularly arrays in this video, we can use the kind of condensed form by accessing either the index or the entry or just the entry itself, which is incredibly useful. We want to kind of examine or move through each thing within an array. Of course, if we're moving through each thing in an array, we call this in programming iterating over something, or more commonly in a kind of a slightly more technical sense, iterating over a range. That particular word range is a special keyword within SugarCube and allows us to do a whole thing. So instead of writing out what we saw in example one, we can, as we saw in example two and example three, write a kind of shorthand version of moving through the entire range of something. And again, incredibly powerful when working with arrays, when we want to move through each thing in array, iterating over it to finally access or do something with those values. Finally, we saw we can break from these loops. It might be situations where as we're searching through or moving through some data structure, iterating over it, we might want to then break from that loop based on some condition. And the break macro, when combined with the four macro, is incredibly powerful for that purpose. We don't necessarily have to move through everything that's in an array, iterate over everything that's in an array. We can break from that loop when we want to. So all of these use cases, working with the four macro and working with arrays, sugar cube, 2.36. Thanks for watching.